Welcome to Creatively Using the Create Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill and today we are going to do a little bit of a design effect inside of Photoshop. And what I wanted to do today is show you some powerful stuff within the brushes. And you can do a ton with the built-in brushes in Photoshop as long as you know how to customize them. And today I'm going to take do a little effect here on the popular theme of the color spectrum. And we're doing the quite famous bouquet effect. So let me show you here what you can do. I've got this canvas here which is currently filled with black and it's a 1440 by 900 pixel which is the size of my normal laptop screen when I'm not recording this here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the background color and I'm going to set this to a dark grey. I'm going to use command backspace or control delete to fill this with the grey color as the background. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take the gradient tool. I'm going to grab one of these rainbow gradients here. So I'm going to grab this one, which is a color spectrum. And I'm going to drag it from one side to the other one, holding the shift key to make it straight here. So as you can see, we get this not so good gradient. What we can do is go to overlay. You might want to reduce the opacity a bit. Something like this. Now we create a new layer. And actually we're going to create a new group. So we're going to group that new layer in which by, you can do by pressing command and then the G key which on the PC is control G. And if I do that correctly now, we'll get a group. I'm just going to name this group Bubbles. And we're going to play around with the blending modes here. I've done the playing around. I think Color Burn or Color Dodge can look a very cool effect here. So next we're going to go to our brushes. And if I just paint, and making sure I'm painting with the white as my foreground, you, you see what happens here we're basically filling in. So, see, uh, sorry, but on the group here, you can play around with the effects. So color dodge usually works the best here. Now, we don't want just straight lines, even if this could be kind of cool, just doing something like that. That's not what we want. We want something much cooler. So I'm going to click the brushes icon here. I'm going to bring up my brushes panel. Inside of here, I'm just going to select the usual, usual soft round brush here. I'm going to increase its size a bit. You can always see the preview. And you can always do this with the bracket keys later on. And I want to increase the spacing and also increase the hardness. And in this case, I I'm, I'm want the hardness set to 100. I'm going to increase the spacing. And then I'm going to go to Shape Dynamics, make sure it's turned on. I'm going to increase size heater to 100 and this is going to be controlled by pen, pen pressure which is good if you've got a tablet. I'm going to not change the minimum diameter here because I want it to be able to get free size. Since it's fully round angle heater doesn't ma ma matter much but roundness heater does but you want to keep that to zero. And we're going to turn on scattering and we're going to scatter it out quite a bit. Increase the count slightly, definitely increase the count yitter a bit. And make sure we have both axes here so we're scattering everywhere. Actually you can see what, what looks best. I think I think both axes look... It looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get this out off to the side here and you could play around some with it, what we're going to do later with some other settings here so let's see here if I start to paint with the brush that we just created you're gonna see that we're getting these bubbles and if I increase the opacity here 
we're gonna see that we get some really nice bubbles in, in this case. And you can always play around with this blending mode in order to get the nicest bubbles possible. Dissolve is probably not the one you want to go with though. So let's see here, let's a good one for this might be might be what we had, or even multiply, so normal or mul multiply, depending a bit on the opacity that you want to use. Something like this I think looks cool. And let's see if I paint here. That looks kinda cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the size slightly more. I'm gonna be painting over here just a couple of big ones. Then I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm gonna go and decrease the size of this brush and I'm gonna paint over a few more times. And this is where it can really help if you've got this pressure sensitive tablet. And you can move through here and you can decrease the size, increase the size, and you can also do the hardness. So if I create another new layer here, I can, can paint with some, some softer ones which could be in the background. Increase it to a lot. Good distance here and we can definitely do this. And keep creating new layers for every new bit you do here. So you're always able to undo afterwards. So now that we're, we've begun creating here, we're getting some kind of desktop wallpaper. Even though I'm just doing it messy here, you might want to consider a little bit what you're doing. Now the beauty of this is that we actually have white bubbles on top of a grey background. So we can change the gradient that we have as a background. So if I don't want, say, it to go back to red here, I want it to end with green. I want to have the different blue shades in between as well as the pink. I can always do this and I can drag out a new gradient and you see you get a slightly different effect. I wouldn't do it, I, I'd probably keep it to a horizontal line here. You can drag it at whichever angle you want and you can change how the gradient looks. And you'll get all of these different effects. And of course you can cut out even more colors like this blue one here. And we've got a basic color spectrum here which goes from green to some kind of blue to back to red again. And because we're using blending mode we can always drop down the opacity if we think it's a bit too harsh. So what we're doing here is basically using a gradient colored background, a type of gradient we'd never use otherwise, and we're together with a, a gray background, and that's part of the trick, having it in the gray background, we're making this bubbly sort of effect that you can use. And of course, if you think one of the bubbles, some of the bubbles are too strong, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity of them, and also apply filters like blur afterwards. So that is creating this bubbly texture inside of Photoshop that has become kind of popular. And that's also the end of this week's Cradle Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill, and I'll be seeing you back next week taking a look at another cool feature or cool technique inside of the Adobe Creative Suite. Bye bye.